I'm Dale Waxler, and I have spent the majority of the past 47 years in my shop building and rebuilding two- and four-wheel artifacts for the sake of history. My building is full and my shop is overflowing with projects so rich in history, they are screaming at my conscience every day for new life. Yeah! Now follow me through the evolution of what I call real school, and we'll bring these bikes back to life. Hey, this is Dale here from The Real School. Let me tell you what we're going to teach you today. We're going to teach you how to build a WR chassis. That's right, a 750 Harley factory-built racing bike. Yesterday, my buddy Scooter stopped in. He called me and said he had a WR. I bought it sight unseen because he told me everything on the bike is low hours. Let me tell you what I did. I got the engine laid out. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to assemble the chassis. He threw this thing in in boxes and crates. I threw it on the floor, and right now I'm going to show you how to put a WR chassis together, and that's what we're going to learn on The Real School. Now I've made a couple notes here, and I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to assemble this motorcycle, build it, and ride it in five shows. What we're doing first is assembling the chassis. Tomorrow we're going to come back and we're going to rebuild a WR crankshaft. I'm going to show you exactly what it takes to make a 750 spin. Next show we're doing is assembling right over here, the top end, the cylinders and the heads. I'll show you why a WR breathes as good as any flathead Harley ever built. Uh, after that, we're going to install that engine. We're going to take a wild tour at Wheels Through Time in WR land. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go assemble a chassis. Follow me. Last night, Scooter dropped his bike off and he kept telling me, this bike is like brand new, this bike is like brand new, and showed me all the parts and it went by really fast. But after Scooter left, it got really interesting. I started spending some time looking at these parts and they really are like new. So what we're working on, what I have the opportunity to share with you is a like new WR. This bike was built in 1946, over a half a century ago. How a racing bike could sit around for that long and be in that good a condition. I'm gonna tell you about some of the components while we're assembling the chassis, kind of show you what I think makes good condition, what is in good condition, and this is what I think makes good condition. These are the original tires off the WR, the original rims, both painted silver, but this is a, a Goodyear Sport Solo. It's actually still soft and pliable. It holds air. This is the rear tire. It's their Firestone Sport Racing Tire, and these are the original tires from this WR, and it's probably one of the lowest mileage WRs, and when it's done, it's going to run like a top. First thing I'm going to do right now is install the brake drum, get some ballast in the back of that thing. We're going to have this chassis assembled in no time. You know, usually on a full restoration, I can build a bike in about 200 hours. This one, way less. All of the parts are great, and all of the parts are there. The engine itself will be the majority of the time. The installation of the engine, that shouldn't take long. This is the frame. It's probably one of the best WR frames I've ever seen. It's got a little marking on the side I've never seen. Two initials made into the forging. Really quite unusual. But the WR frame itself is very similar to a stock road model, but it's really not. This is the real deal. What I'm gonna do right now is show you how to assemble a WR. You know, it's a steel frame with, these are uh, cast steel forgings. Um, a lot of the parts on the WR our road model parts. The bikes that you could put on an Army WLA or any of the bikes they built all the way up to 1952. And by the way, the 45, got my 45 shirt on today. You can get one at Wheels Through Time. Uh, the 45 is the longest continuously produced uh, Harley that they ever built, 1929 to 1952. And um, it's really kind of not known how many 45s were built, although they built 66,000 in World War II uh, for the military. Now the WRs are fairly accountable and uh, it's pretty well thought that about 600 WRs were made from 1941 all the way to 1952. So what we're doing here is we're kind of loosely assembling this bike. We'll very likely God, that thing is, looks like brand new. That's the original sprocket and it doesn't show anywhere. I think what I'm gonna do is uh, take just a couple of minutes and clean this sprocket up a little bit and uh, I'll be right back. My old pal Joe Brown once told me, keep your sprockets clean makes a big difference. That old sprocket on that 45 was full of grit and grime. Cleaned it with a wire brush, ready to go. 
kind of simple. What I just did was I just cleaned the sprocket so when the chain rolls, it's not rolling over grit and grime. It's rolling over raw Harley Davidson steel. The sprocket looks like brand new. So uh, nothing really rocket science about taking a basket case bike and putting it back together. Everything does not have to be uh, perfect to the world. What I'm doing right now is just sanding a little bit the inside of the brake drum. Of course, it's pretty rare to find a brake drum that's actually that good on the inside. So with the brake drum on it, I'm gonna get this back wheel on it. With the back wheel on it, I'll have a little ballast. When I put the front end on it, it'll just make things go way smoother. You know, it's really amazing when you find a true low mileage machine. Uh, there's never fighting anything, anything. Everything goes right back together. Even with these feeble old hands, I can turn all the parts. Everything works great. We're going to get this front end on in just a little bit. The Harley Springer, this is the same fork as the uh, Army bike. Uh, the WR had a few distinguishing items. On only a few of the factory WRs, the fork is not only brazed together, but it's welded together, adding extra strength. We're going to have this fork on in a little bit. I'm going to put the transmission in it, and it won't take long. We'll have this entire chassis put together. You know, all of these parts I looked at very carefully last night, and they all looked really good. I took the top of the transmission off. It looked nice and oily and greasy. I'll put a new gasket and reseal it. I'll probably take the wheels back off and re-lubricate the bearings. The transmission looks in great shape. The engine will be rebuilt. So most of those parts will go on that bike. They won't need much loving. Huh, those bearings are great. So are the brakes. Hey, the WR project is rolling right along. I want to get the front end, get the front wheel on it, get it up on wheels, and, uh, but I need a little ballast. So I'm going to drop in the WR tranny. I talked about what good condition it was inside. Look inside this transmission. Look at the gears on this thing. They're like absolutely brand new. Now I can put the tr a new gasket and the top on it with the transmission and the bike. So this thing's going in permanently right now. The WR's got a three-speed transmission, and uh, these transmissions are really difficult to build. Uh, also, parts for the WR transmission are nearly impossible to find. So to find a bike in this good a condition is just extremely outstanding. I wonder when the last time that thing was in there. That's the seat post. That's the suspension system. So the seat T goes here, up and down you go, right down the road. I'm gonna get the front end on it next. We've got the bearings all in it and greased up. This thing weighs about 50 pounds. The Harley Springer, straight as an arrow, original WR handlebars. This is an extraordinary motorcycle. I don't know how many of those I've screwed in, but I think there's 120 turns on that. Seems like it could take forever. I've written several manuals while tightening one of those bolts up. You know what's really amazing about this motorcycle, and Scooter said all the nuts and bolts are there, and he was right. Check this out. We got all the original transmission, original nuts, bolts, and lock washers that go on like a champ. So I've got the transmission uh, now well installed and um, the front end's installed. Time for the handlebars, then the front wheel, and then uh, onto the, uh, getting this damn bolt on here. God, I thought I was gonna die with that one. These are the real deal. These are WR flat track bars. Check out the bend. They're pretty straight. They've been welded and repaired, probably custom made, uh, custom bent. 
just to the man's style. Look how that thing flops right on there. God, the bearings on this thing were perfect. And by the way, the neck bearings, uh, those weren't new neck bearings. They were in a little, a little uh, actually it was an old cigarette box and uh, the original neck bearings for the bike. I'm going to put the front wheel on it next and uh, we should be able to uh, um, have this bike on wheels in no time. The reason I get so excited about these parts, look at them. These rods have been carefully drilled, balanced, and polished. The entire motorcycle was built in the racing shop in Milwaukee from 1941 to 1952. End of that story. Who wouldn't get excited? Well, the name of the game is to make the pile of parts smaller and uh, this 1946 WR has really come together. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to put the tanks and rear fender on it. Tomorrow, we're going to start on that engine. Well, as you can see, we're not all the way there, but the WR chassis has really taken great form. It's come a long way from a bare frame just really not that long ago. And uh, tomorrow we're going to build the motor. But there's one more thing I want to teach you about, and that's my new pal lives up in Ohio. I got to show you what he did. This guy calls me up. He's a young fella. He's really interested in WR motorcycles. And he asked me if I had one of those rear pads that go on the back. He's a leather crafter and he wanted to make one. Let me show you what he did. Oh yeah, the one more thing. This is the original pad that I sent him. This is what he sent me back. He's um, patinaed the leather. This one fits great, but this is the deal. This is his pad. Great rendition of the Harley WR pad. And this is the shirt that he gave me. The River Dude, River Seat Company. Check them out, go online. That's all we got for today. Got to keep these young guys active. Thanks for the pad, appreciate it.